the concept of the MATLAB that will be utilized as a language for the purpose of the designing and implementation of the DSP algorithm in the DSP lab. Here, as we know, if we are interested to design any system, then the first of all, we have to develop the mathematical equation. That is the, if uh, whether we are interested for the analog system or for the digital system, for that purpose, we have to go through the requirement. equation if the system is analog naturally that will be the differential equation and if the system is digital then the set of the equations will be different equations here right so here uh, in order to uh, discuss the concept of the matlab here i'm just So in this one, uh, first we will develop the mathematical equations. Now the mathematical equations may be the differential equation or the difference equation. And from those equations, we have to derive the transfer function and how the transfer function will be derived as we have discussed it uh, yesterday, that by taking the Laplace transformation or the Z transformation, we can get here the uh, transfer function of the system. And uh, that is a, a ratio transformed a ratio of the transform output to the transform input with all initial conditions considered to be zero and from those transfer functions we will try to analyze the concept of the stability or position and locations of the pole zero and hence we can also analyze the concept of the response of the system when we uh, replace the s by the j omega or the z by e to power j omega and accordingly we can analyze the concept and if uh, the it the response is satisfactory then we will move for the purpose of the designing and if the designed result is up to the mark uh, that is there is uh, no deviation beyond the permissible range then that will be implemented uh, for the purpose of the uh, uh, given requirement these are the basic concepts which are used here now if we see each and every uh, step here then we will find for each and every steps even uh, during the time of the decision of the um, uh, determination of the components or the parameters it is a mathematical equation and how we will derive the uh, set of the differential and the difference equations these are a very large uh, set of the differential equations and then we have to find out the transfer function analysis of the transfer function etc here and in order to make easy the analysis at each and every step we have to move for a language that is the applicative language and it is known as the MATLAB and we know the here uh, that it is easy to program and it is similar uh, a language like this uh, other uh, languages like the C it's a try here and the better expansion capability and it is powerful numerical methods for uh, various math problem and it is capable for the symbolic computation also here and numerous toolboxes in different maths and engineering and non-engineering fields can be covered with this language here it has the powerful dynamics uh, system simulation and the uh, gui based simulating modeling capacity and uh, number of the uh, language in automatic control uh, and community uh, are interactive with this language here that's why we are moving to this uh, uh, particular uh, language that is known as the MATLAB and it may be utilized in any one field of the engineering, automobiles, communication, aerospace, computation, processing, analysis, etc. here. And uh, we are just going to cover these concepts that is the background of the MATLAB, interactive calculations, vectors and matrices, graphical illustrations here. Now we will uh, try to start it from the very, very uh, beginning, uh, that is from the zero level. As uh, I have uh, this with the, some students, 
which we are uh, present uh, uh, that is before starting the class and they have mentioned that we should start from this concept that is the basic concepts of the matlab that's why we are going to discuss this uh, uh, concept that is the basic concepts of the matlab there may be the students who are well aware with the concepts of the matlab but we will start it from the very uh, uh, zero level now what is the matlab matlab is the abbreviation of the matrix laboratory because in the mathematical calculation or mathematical modeling each equations and uh, their representation may be represented with the help of the matrices here that is the system is itself a set of the matrices and the system operates on the signal that is also a set of the matrices means the set of the matrix or the matrices is operating on the uh, another set of the matrices here and hence we are we will get here the set of the matrices that's why we can this uh, type of the language is suitable for the which type of the laboratory that is named as the matrix laboratory here and it is uh, uh, here the it was com uh, commercialized by the maths work in 1984 and uh, in order to install the matlab compiler here matlab compiler requires a support ncc or cc plus compiler and uh, you can go to this website here that is the www.mathswork.com and there are the some tools which are available free in this pandemic situation for the purpose of the uh, designing simulation and analysis etc here now if we see the construction of the matlab then the here the basic uh, kernel uh, is the c kernel here and the uh, commands are used are uh, using the concept of the c kernels and when we write any program using the different commands then there will be a file and the file will be saved as the dot m file here and if we are using so many dot m files so that we can cover any particular field here uh, for example say we have covered the field of the signal processing control system etc then that is named as the uh, a toolbox means that uh, if we have covered each and every concept of that particular field and uh, then that software that package we has like a toolbox here and in the toolbox uh, when we select the toolbox then a dialog box will be open with the help of the dialog box uh, that is very interactive dialog box and uh, with that dialog box we can uh, design analyze uh, our concepts here and particularly in this case in the digital signal processing we will utilize one uh, of, uh, toolbox that is named as the fda toolbox filter design and analysis toolbox and that that is uh, used for the purpose of the um, representation of any uh, concept uh, of our dsp or any other fields uh, using the block diagram and this is known as the dot mdl file so there are the three concepts one is the m file second is the toolbox here and the third one is the simulink here now if we if we select uh, the icon of the matlab which is reflecting here like that now if you uh, double click on that matlab then you have by default we will find that these four uh, windows that is the command window workspace command history launch pad here uh, here the command window means, uh, we have to type the commands workspace view program variables clear to clear double click on a uh, variable to see it in the array editor and command history naturally will represent the past commands here and launch pad access tools and demos and demonstrations uh, may be accessed uh, from this now this is the uh, representation uh, this is a picture of the uh, your um, uh, windows that will be reflected by clicking on the um, matlab from here uh, or matlab uh, icon here um if this is a here these are the different sections like the this windows workspace uh, command window command history and the launch pad now we are coming to the philosophy of the data storage here as we know data are storage in this format like the numerical values form character strings form structures cells and boolean forms uh, so we are just going to uh, describe uh, the routine work using the matlab there is nothing in the matlab we have to just use the same concept concept which we used to use in our daily life for example if we are interested in order to now we are just going to describe the elementary operators here please be connected here 
uh, uh, here now suppose you are interested in order to assign some values you just put these are the prompt here the medley prompt and the after prompt you will uh, type the uh, here the variable name the value is equal to that one then that will be terminated by the semicolon here if you have uh, typed the semicolon it means you have terminated the command and if there is no semicolon then that will be executed here and the second variable is y and then for the purpose of the addition you have to use simple x plus y and you will get the result similarly uh, you, for the purpose of the subtraction you have to write the subtraction sign here and you will get the result for the multiplication just put the uh, symbol of the multiplication for the division right here the slash and power type uh, these are the very simple representation in order to get the elementary operators here now the next step suppose we are interested for some scalar operations here then for the scalar operations you just select here the uh, uh, any new vector or the variable uh, suppose that is the z and we have already defined in the previous slide that is what is the x and now the x is modified by the 2 that is the x plus 2 here you will get the new values here now see what is happening here in this one if uh, we have defined the x as 1 2 3 here we have defined the x as equal to the 1 2 3 and they have added the 2 then each and every uh, elements will become the 3 4 5 and now see semicolon semicolon means termination the first row will be terminated the second row starts and the third row starts it means this is a column vector here and if if we just write here the 3 space 4 and 5 then that becomes a row vector here right so this is the column vector when uh, each and every element has been uh, terminated here and termination means next row will be started here now for the purpose of the subtraction we will utilize here the subtraction for sign for the multiplication multiplication sign and for the division division here uh, and for the summation suppose there is any vector x x is defined as the vector this is a row vector here one two three four you can define the character in a row either by a simple space or by putting the comma here means one character gap is required between the two consecutive values here that is a one comma two comma three comma four this is a row one two three four and we are interested in order to sum all the elements just put here the sum x you will get here the result similarly if you are interested in order to get the product of all the uh, uh, elements for example the any uh, here the y is the new vector and it is the row not a row but it is a column vector here and we are interested in order to get the product then just write here the product the name of the vector we will get the product here very simple commands has to be used here uh, for this purpose now we are moving to the third step that is the vector operation for the purpose of the vector operation uh, suppose one vector is the x and the second is y and we are interested in order to get the multiplication of the vector x and y as we know the row is multiplied by the column this is the mathematical representation and it is uh, written as the summation x i multiplied by y i uh, x i multiplied by y i summation series i is equal to 1 to n here now the same can be done here by just defining the uh, two vectors here x and y and you will get here the product of the uh, two vectors here and here the uh, all the elements will be uh, multiplied according to this mathematical formula and we will get the result similarly in order to get the transpose we have to just write here the x prime the, and we will get here the uh, this transpose matrix here and for the cross here the cross you will get the cross product of the two vectors here now the, here the in the previous case we have just used the symbols like the addition multiplication uh, subtraction uh, division and power etc but in this case if you are interested in order to perform the operations element wise then you have to just use the sign and after the and before the operator you have to use the dot uh, and for the purpose of the addition and uh, subtraction there is no need but in the case of the multiplication division and the power if we are interested for the element wise operation then we have to use dot in first is that the element wise operation means 
first element will be multiplied by the first one. So 2, 1, 2. 4, 2, 8. 6, 3, 18. Like that. Now we can use the sum functions. So here we are just trying to summarize some functions here uh, that are used in the array functions here. Uh, for the mean purpose, just write here of the vector means first define the vector and write here the mean a and that will return the mean value of the vector for example we have considered here the a as the 5 9 2 4 and mean of that one becomes to 5 largest element in a uh, in order to get the largest value of any vector just define the vector and write here the c c is not a part of the command c means that is a variable here any variable and that is equal to our any vector that is equal to maximum value of the a largest element in a and that will be represented here and if we are interested in order to get the value as well as the location and position then right here the dn maximum of the a uh, and here the d means the small d is uh, is the largest element in the a and n is the position here we will get the value largest value as well as position of that largest value here similarly we can get here the minimum value or the here the uh, with the without position or and with the position in order to get the sum as we have discussed it in the previous slide just write here the sum of the a in order to arrange the elements in ascending order write down just here the short a and in order to get the median return uh, median of the a it will uh, means returns the median value of the vector here <laughs> now uh, the array functions are continued here uh, the standard deviation of any vector a uh, in order to get the standard deviation just write here the std a it returns the standard deviation of the vector and if we write the det uh, it returns the determinant of the square matrix a and in order to get the inverse of any matrix just write here the i and v a in order to get the dot product of the two uh, vectors uh, a and b uh, just uh, right here the dot and in order to get the cross product of the two vectors just right here the cross so commands are very simple which we used to use in our uh, routine life the same are used here for the purpose of the commands also now the next concept is the random value as we know in order to design and then analyze the concept of the any system there is a major role of the noise and the random values because the noise is always represented with the help of the random values. So here we will discuss the some commands that are related to the random values. The if we write here the R A and D, it will generate the single random number between the zero and one. If we write the random one comma n, then it will generate n random number that is the row vector between the zero and one. And here the example is given. If we write the rand n in the parenthesis, then this will generate the n cross n matrix and having that num uh, each element at the random between the 0 and 1 if we write the rand mn that is the m cross n matrix will be generated having the nature of the random if we write the rand per n means it will uh, generate a row vector with n elements and that are perm uh, that are permutation of integers 1 through n and in each and every case we have just represented here the examples and you can test it by just typing the command and selecting the values here. Rand n, it will generate uh, the normally distributed uh, numbers with mean zero and standard deviation of the one. See here the difference between the rand n and when we write the rand in parenthesis n here. In, if you write the rand in parenthesis n, it will generate the n cross n matrix. If you write here the just rand n, it means it will generate the normally distributed numbers with uh, mean zero and standard deviation of the one now some uh, representations of the matrices here suppose we are interested in order to represent a vector or the array uh, that is a row vector or the a column vector as we have discussed in the previous slide that if we are just separating the two elements row vector here see this is the row vector and one semicolon two semicolon four uh, uh, semicolon 5 that is the here the column vector and that will be represented something like this manner 
if we are interested in order to represent the two dimensional arrays uh, two dimensional arrays m cross n that is here we have selected the three cross three matrix that is one two three first row then terminated four minus five six second row again termination takes place five minus six seven the third row here one two three four minus five six five minus six seven this is the representation of the matrix now in uh, indexing the matrix suppose we are interested in order that is uh, that belongs to the second row and the third column you just write here the first define the a and in order to pick or in order to select any particular value uh, indexing is required and how that can be done sir? for the example the second yeah sir, sir in the previous slide uh, that uh, the in which that uh, rand commands were there please ex explain the example in the rand command rand just very simple just uh, uh, remember it only we have to use which command rand for the purpose of the rand and if you just write here the rand then that will generate the uh, single random number between the 0 and 1 and that number may be any value as it, at each and every time you will get the new values because this is the random okay similarly if you write here the rand 1 cross n then what will be the outcome of this one it will generate a n random number of the single row right uh, and these values right values of the random numbers will be between the 0 and 1 for example say we have written here the one uh, command that is the rand 1 comma 4 means how many random numbers will be there yeah please answer it how many random numbers will be there four four and their values will be between the 0 and 1. So here, see, the four random number uh, values, they are not deterministic. They are not represented in any particular minor or they are not following a particular uh, mathematical rule. But they are the random. If you write again and again the same command, you will get the new values here. Random, random means unwanted signal is said to be the noise. And we have to estimate the noise because the value is unknown. So in order to develop the model of any noise signal, the values must be which type? Random, right? So, and similarly, if you write here the rand n, that will generate the n cross n matrix. Here we have uh, written rand four, means what will be the size of the matrix? Four cross four. That is the four rows and the four column here. One, two, three rows and four columns. One, two, three and four. And each and every element, will be between the 0 and 1. Nature will be the random. Similarly, random n cross n, sorry, m dot n, that is the m cross n matrix will be generated. Here we have m is selected 2, uh, n selected 4. So the two rows, four column, 2, 3, and 4 column, two rows here, right? And the each and every ele element between the 0 and 1, and the nature will be random here. Now, random uh, rand permutation uh, n that will generate a row vector with n elements here we have selected our elements eight and what are the and they are the permutation of integers one through n here these will be the permutation one to uh, how much eight here so they will be represented here all the values are represented here and similarly if we write here the rand n without parenthesis then it will generate the normally distributed numbers and in order to uh, uh, develop the model of any particular type of the noise suppose there is a need of the normally distributed numbers then for that purpose we will write here the rand n and the rand n uh, uh, and uh, then we have written here the three comma four means three rows and the four columns so this is the same what we are doing here and these are very simple just remember you have to use only the which command rand command okay so and we have gone through this one is there any doubt in this one no sir okay no, sir. for the purpose of the indexing now suppose we are interested in order to index any particular value that is the second row third uh, second row and the third column so the a is defined as we have defined in the previous uh, ppt here that is the a is defined here and the same value has been taken here the a 
is same same vector or the same matrix okay which we have decided uh, defined in the previous uh, ppt now in order to get the 2 comma 3 that is the second row this is the second row having the elements 4 minus 5 and 6 and the third column so the uh, third column will superimpose to this one so which elements will be selected 6 so here the we are selecting the this value here 6 similarly if we are interested in order to select the four elements that is the second and second column here so here the second and second row this one third row is this one first column is this one and second column is this one so the common elements are the four minus five five and six and if we change the order then the values will be also changed here for example if we select here the in place of the two three now we are selecting here the three two means the third row and second row what is the third row third row is the this one five six seven that is the five six seven first will be selected here right and then four minus five and six and then again there is a change in the column the first will be the second column so the second column is this one that is the six will be first element then minus five so here in the first one six and minus five and second will be five and four so if you are changing the position of the rows and column accordingly the index values will be changed here indexing matrix the same is true here if we are select uh, interested in order to select a particular row you just write here the a one then a column here first and second row either in this way or the, in this way now suppose we are interested in order to write some elements in a particular row suppose this is the row here okay and in this row we are to put the values one to five having the uniform back and then we will write here the v is equal to one and the initial value is one and final value is the five and there is no step size no gap is defined here and if you are not defining any gap between the initial uh, the two consecutive values here it means by default that will be selected as one so here the initial value will be the one so with the help with the gap of the one the two three four and the final value is the five so all the elements are represented here so the here the outcome are the uh, if you write v is equal to one comma five means the initial value is the one and final value is five and the row matrix will be represented here similarly if you write one is the initial value and the final value is five but the gap between the two consecutive elements is the two so this is the second representation that is the initial value and this is the final value and in between this these two you have to define the gap here so if the, this gap is the two then this will become the one three and five here because the one next value will become the three and the last value will become five now as we have discussed in the uh, previous lecture that we can represent the numbers in the fixed point number system or the floating point number system for the floating point number system we have to use this one and we can for the purpose of that single precision number system you have to just write here the single and for the double precision number system you have to write the double here and for the fixed point number system the, for the floating point number system if we are following uh, the double precision you have to write the double and for the single precision you have to write the single single precision means how many bits 32 bit double precision means 64 bit now in fixed point if unsigned integer u i n t that is the unsigned integer having the length of the 8 bit and similarly we can use the another commands like the integer 8 bit integer 16 bit 32 unsigned integer unsigned integer 32 and uh, 16 bit respectively here now for the matrix logic operation very simple command nothing has to be worried there is no such uh, no additional concept we have to just follow whatever we uh, use in our routine life for the logical operations we use the ending oring not xr for the two signals you just write here the end av or av not a xr av 
and the performance will be same here a and b a r b inverse of the a x r a and b here now during the time of the rounding and the truncation there, there are the different functions which have to be followed here we are just summarizing the function here which will uh, generally be used in the mathematics if we write here the flow for the purpose of the flooring uh, that is towards the lower values seal command for the higher values upper values round fix rational values rate remainder re gcd gcd and lcm for the lcm lcm and in order to get the factors uh, we will just write here the factor whether that is a prime or not you just write here the each prime here these are the commands which are very simple commands which will be used in the matlab now the order of precedence the first order of the precedence is given to the parenthesis second for the exponentiation third for the logical knot fourth for the multiplication and division fifth addition and the subtraction sixth relational operations seventh logical and and the last that is the eighth logical or now after this mathematical representation and discussion as we know if we have numerically represented any value then for the purpose of the analysis there is need of the graphical representation so we will try to discuss the two dimensional and three dimensional plot here just see these are very easy concepts you just try to be connected with us and after this lecture try to practice it for the plot two dimensional plot nothing is special one you just remember one simple command that is for any type of the plot you have to use one command that is the plot nothing plot okay now we will discuss here the plot and the plot in the x y plot as we know there are the different types of the plot like the here the um, three dimensional plot polar plot and simple two dimensional plots and after drawing the graph the sum formatting is required formatting for which purpose that is the plot title has to be written and then what has to be written on the y level what has to be written on the x level tick mark on the x level tick mark on the y level and data symbols means this uh, here the each and every value that is data will be represented by a particular symbol and the here the text has to be written for example we have written here the comparison between the theory and experiment result and legend has to be described which so will which graph will show the theory so the experiment these are uh, formatting are also required here so first we will draw the graph and then we will discuss about the formatting here now suppose we are interested in order to draw the plot between the x and y as we know x is the independent parameter y is the dependent parameter so you just define the x first define the x for example we have given a table here the values of the x are given y is given here and we are interested just to draw the plot okay means y is a function of the x that may be very simple function that may be very complex function but y is a function of the x so first what have to be done the first we have to define the x so here just define the x how the x will be defined as we know this is a row vector so 1 2 3 5 7 7.5 8 10 10 all the elements are represented here gap between the two either you can consider one space uh, between the two consecutive gap or you can put here the comma similarly the y will find here and now just write here the plot x comma y and you will get the graph and that graph by default will be blue in light a uh, blue in color solid line and no marker see here the graph between the x and y you are getting the graph between the x and y and what is the color color is the blue so and it is represented with the solid line there is no marker for the data here neither we have written anything on the x axis nor y axis nor any title of the graph okay just coming to the another point here that suppose we are interested in order to plot the graph 
and at the same times we have to also describe here what will be the style of the line what will be the color of the line and what are the different for that purpose again the same simple command you just remember here the plot then independent variable and variable then in inverted comma after putting the comma in a inverted comma you have to define the line specifiers and what are the line specifiers line specifiers means style of the line color of the line and markers which have to be used and for the purpose of the defining the line specifiers are the color style and the marker first if we select the style then the solid line for the solid line we have to use this dot here the this point and for the dotted line we have to select here the column dash this one dash dash and for the dash dot we have to use the dash dot here for the red color we have to select the uh, letter r green g blue b cyan c magenta m yellow y black k similarly for the marker uh, specifiers we have to use if we are interested for the plus sign put the plus sign circle asterisk point square s and for the diamond d these are the different line specifiers which will be used in order to represent our graph in different style color and marker type now suppose if we write here the plot x comma y simple plot x comma y it means the color will be blue and a solid line will be represented no marker here if you write here the plot x comma y r it means the solid which color line yes what will be the color red 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 and there will be no marker and if we put here the x comma y and then this is that dash, dash dash that is the dashed line yellow in color here right and uh, if we write here the x y and then here the asterisk then the marker will be the asterisk here and if we write the x comma y g that is green in color and the dotted line will be used here because we are using this symbol for the dotted line dotted line and the marker will be the d that is the diamond okay so now see here the examples these are the uh, commands and now we are moving to some examples here suppose we have a table and this table has the some data related to the different years here the year is the independent variable that is the x and this is the y here so first define the x and define the y now see here we have selected here the a uniform gap since there is a uniform gap between the consecutive uh, elements here that's why we have selected the initial value and the final value and put a uniform gap one you can you may also write this one just a starting value and then final value there is no need to write one because by default the gap will be considered as one so and y axis is defined by this one now write down the plot plot means plot between which uh, values x comma y here so the year comma y cells and then the dashed line here and red in color and what will the marker style that is the asterisk now see these are the these are the commands just three line commands and we will get here the result this is the result here that we are getting here the dashed line red in color marker is the asterisk okay now coming to the a little bit more complex function suppose this is function is given so again we have to do we have to follow concept that function may be very simple or that may be very complex suppose the function is given y is equal to 3.5 its power minus 0.5 x plus 6 x and range of the x is given from minus 2 to 4 here it's to be defined first while it is to define karenge yes please respond what has to be first defined x x very right x independent variable and here we have put the percentage percentage uh, means if you have written percent uh, something after the percentage symbol that is not a part of the program that is just a comment right so here the program starts from here the x is defined here and what is the initial value 
minus 2 and final value 4 here we have selected a gap that is the space of what 0 0.01 and then we have defined a function the x is defined because the x is minus 2 to 4 and we have selected here the gap 0 0.01 and you have defined the function here and just after defining y x and y write down the plot x comma y what will be the color of the graph what should blue. be the color of the graph blue blue blue, blue. line style solid solid, solid. marker no marker no marker no marker very right good so this is the graph between the x and y the function is defined in terms of the x and we will get the function again uh, solid uh, line style blue in color no marker and since we have mentioned no any type of the uh, here the comment on the x and y axis are there any type of the title so it is just representation of the graph between the x and y now come to the another point here having the same function but what is difference here the function is same the range of the x is same the graph is different why step size is larger the step size is larger very good so what is the effect of this one if the step size is larger what is the effect so the graph is data points. yeah the less previous was points. more yeah previous was more smoother than this one so what is the conclusion that in order to get the smooth result what we have to select which type of the gap it's smaller. as small as, small small as, small as possible yeah a smaller gap a smaller gap has to be considered right okay very good good response so now our we are moving to the next step that is the f plot in the previous we have discussed the plot and now this is the f plot f plot is nothing but f means function in this one we have we can describe each and everything within the command in a single command means we will write here the f plot then in parenthesis under inverted comma first we will define the function and then we will define the limits and we will get the result now see here and at the same time what is the limit limit means on of the x-axis and the y-axis so the x-axis means that with the x minimum to x maximum y minimum to y maximum or if they are if we are interested only for the x-axis x minimum and x maximum like that see the example here suppose this is the example of one function y that is function of the x right function of, y is a function of the x and the limit of the x is minus 3 to 3 here so in order to get the plot according to the previous concept we will define the x and then we will define the y and then we will write plot x comma y with the line specifiers am i okay excuse in me, this sir. case yeah sir in f plots uh, we do not use dot asterisk for multiplication if if we are using the same size then there is no need and if the size is different as we know because uh, the here multiplication takes place rows by the column so we have to use the here the element wise operation okay since we are doing here the matrix operation so we have to define the x having the same range for the y okay so, okay now f plot f plot write the f plot then define the what will be the defined here the function after defining the function the limit so we have defined here the function x square plus 4 sine 2x minus 1 and the limit of the x minus 3 to 3 what will be the gap What is the step size here? One. One. By default, this will be one because we have not defined the gap. So 
it will be one here and we will get this result here right now if we are interested in order to draw the more than one plots and we are also interested to hold it for the purpose of the comparison uh, comparison and the analysis then for that purpose first we will plot the graph then hold on and then we will plot the another graph and then we will put the hold off command here now see suppose we are interested in order to draw the graph between the x and y u and v t and h then we can plot the graph by this one that is the x and y q and b t and s but all will be blue in color so there will be no difference now using the line specifiers we can repeat the same command like the plot x comma y so first one will be the solid a style blue color second will be the red in color third one will be the green and this line here correct now see here suppose there is a function this is the function y of the x and range of the x is minus 2 to 4 here and another values are suppose we are getting here the first derivative and it is represented by the yd second derivative y double d now see here yd and y double d these are not the commands but they are the symbols they are the notations here we have used the notation yd for the first derivative of the y and y dd that is the second derivative of the y so here we will first we will define the x then we will define the y now how uh, how many dependent parameters of, uh, how many dependent functions are there now there are the three dependent functions one is the y second one is the first derivative of the y third one is the second derivative of the y so here we will define the x then y yd y dd and we are interested in order to plot the graph between the x and y that will be blue in color then y x and first derivative of the y red in color dashed line x and second derivative of the y and black black in color here k means black in color now see and dotted like here now see here we are getting the three graphs okay this is one method by which we can use the same window for the purpose of the analysis and the same can be done with the help of the plot hold on and the hold off command also see here hold on means this will hold the current plot and all axis uh, properties so that subsequent plot commands add to the existing plot and when you will put the hold off returns to the default mode whereby plot commands erase the previous plots and reset all axis properties before drawing new plot here now suppose this is the example here y is given range of the x is given so first as usual we will define the x define the y first derivative of the y second derivative of the y plot x comma y blue in color solid style then hold on how many graphs Mo more graph has have to be plotted to so plot x comma y d red in color dashed line and the plot x comma y d d black in color dotted style and then hold off now see the result here there are the three graphs i think it is not with which will in this case okay the same graph will be plotted here which we have plotted in the previous case this we will get the same plot here using the hold on and the hold off command here now suppose we are interested in order to put the some title of the graph that is we are now we are moving to the editing of a graph then for that purpose after plotting the graph you can select here the uh, file from the file menu edit and you can edit the x axis level y axis level tick mark on the x axis tick mark on the y axis you can put here the plot title legend but i advise that you should always use 
it as a command part of the program so we are just moving to describe the add title to the plot add labels to the axis change range of the axis add legend add text blocks add grid here for entering the title you have to use only the command title then whatever is the title that has to be written here on the access level you just write here the x level and then what has to be written put here same is true for the y level and in order to define the range of the axis write here the axis then minimum value of the x maximum value of the x minimum value of the y maximum value of the y for the legend write here the legend then first legend for the first comma second comma third for the particular location x and y x value that is x axis and y axis that is a point the title this text will be written at this location x comma y and suppose we are interested in order to write some text that is movable and we can uh, move it then for that purpose we can use this type of the command that is the g text here write the string here now suppose we are interested in order to represent some graph as well as we are so interested to edit it then take the example of the x y first derivative of the here the x uh, y and then plot x and y then hold down plot x d and y d and say this is the red in color this is circle dotted uh, here the dashed line style and um, I, we have defined the line width and the marker size also here then hold off now the next is we are interested in order to write something on the x level right here the x level then what has to be written put here y level the same title of the title then in inverted comma we have written this one what title has to be written here and then axis the x value minimum x value minimum y value maximum y value and it has obtain y 700 and what is the text comparison between the uh, comparison between theory and experiment and the uh, is color red line width two here and legend theory and the experiment now see here the legend is theory and x and 14 and 700 we have written the text here we have used the two uh, here the legend one is the uh, this circle red in color and for the theory we have used the uh, by default value that is the blue here and the x axis we have written the distance in centimeter intensity uh, in the lux here and that this is the title of the graph here the same can be done by using the editing window here now we will if we are interested in order to graph some more complex plot for the simple plot we have to use the plot x comma y and for the semi log plot that is the one axis is logarithmic if the y axis is logarithmic then we have to define the x and y and put here the semi log y then x comma y if x axis has to be logarithmic then same pattern define x and y and write the semi log x then x comma y both axes have to be logarithmic then log log x comma y very simple for any type of the graph we can use this uh, command here which we used to use in uh, writing editing reading etc here say here the x that is the year is defined this one y sale is defined by this one and we are interested in order to get the bar if you write the bar only then you will get the vertical bar graph here and if you write bar s then horizontal graph bar graph will be drawn here x comma y and red in color we are getting here the red in color here we have defined the x and y and then we have put here the bar s that is horizontal um, bar will be plotted here no line specifier so this will be represented blue in color interested in order to get the stair function or the stair plot similarly define the x and y put here the stairs since it is by default blue you can put here the line specifier in order to get the stem function 
that are used in the discrete time systems and signals define the x then x comma y you will get the h time function for the pie chart that is suppose we are interested in order to define the grade of the students out of the total students 45 how many have received the a b c like that then for the a suppose this is 11 16 like that and now put here the define the grade and then write down the pi grade and you will uh, get here the graph in order to introduce the title as we have uh, described just put here the title and put the string here class grade in order to get the polar plot define the theta and the radius r the theta is, it is defined by this one r is defined by this one here and polar plot t and r between the t and r and you will get here the blue in color polar plot again we have defined here that t and r and polar plot between the t and r will be drawn here and if we are interested in order to fill the color draw the graph and uh, use only the fill command here and you will get the graph again the same example for the uh, bar we have defined here the bar pi which we have used so these are the different types of the plots which are used in the two dimensional now we can discuss the three dimensional plot but i think uh, the time has already been over so we will discuss the three dimensional plot in the next lecture and again i suggest you again i request you please repeat whatever we cover in the lecture and try to make the practices on these topics so thank you thank you very much we will and we will practice it in the live session and please follow the live session and you would like any query no query so thank you we will meet we are just going to stop the recording